Hey guys, it's Tom from Liftoff. Today I'm going to show you how to set up SMTP Relay for Office 365 using IIS on Windows. For our example, we're going to use Windows Server 2019. The process is pretty similar for all versions of Windows. The first thing we want to do is install SMTP Server. So I'm going to open PowerShell from the Start menu. And I'm going to right click and choose Run as Administrator. Here you're going to want to type add windows feature and then space SMTP dash server and hit enter. Okay, that takes a little bit of time. So while that's running, we're going to open a browser. And the first thing we want to do is go to Google. I'm already there and type what's my IP, just like I did it there. Go ahead and hit enter. This is going to give you the IP that your server uses to get to the internet. Go ahead and copy that to your clipboard. And now we're going to go to admin.microsoft.com for the 365 admin portal. If you're not already logged in, log in as a global administrator. Then scroll down on the left hand side and under admin centers, choose exchange. And once it loads, you're going to go to Mailflow. And then at the top, you're going to go to Connectors. Here, go ahead and click the plus and choose from your organization's email server to Office 365 and choose Next. Give it a name. I prefer SMTP Relay, shortened to the point. Go ahead and uncheck that bottom box. This isn't an Exchange server, so we don't want to keep old headers. And choose Next. Here, you're going to choose the second radio button. And you're going to click plus and paste that IP you copied earlier. Click OK. Choose next and then save. This can take a few moments. Go ahead and click OK. Now you're going to click on protection. And at the top, you're going to click connection filter and double click on default. Here you're going to go to Connection Filtering and click the top plus for the Allow List. And once again, you're going to paste the IP that's on your clipboard. Click OK and Save. This is going to make sure that Microsoft doesn't filter your SMTP relay messages as spam. Go ahead and click OK. And one more thing we're going to do in the 365 side of things is click back on the Admin Center tab that we had open. If you need to get there again, again, it's admin.microsoft.com and scroll up and go to Settings, Domains. If you're not in the new Admin Center, it might be under Setup, Domains. And if you're in GCC High, you're not going to have this feature. I'll tell you what to do in a second. Double click on your default domain. And once it loads, you're going to copy <coughs> this top points to value for MX for your domain, just like I've done here. It should end in Outlook.com. If you're in the GCC high, for this part, you're just going to use the MX record that Microsoft provided you. OK, now that I have that copied to my clipboard, I'm going to minimize this page. We can see that in PowerShell, SMTP server is installed. So I'm going to minimize PowerShell. And now I'm going to go to Start, and I'm going to type Services. I'm going to hit Enter. And here, we're going to scroll down to simple mail transfer protocol. I'm going to double click on it. This is the server for SMTP Relay. And we can see it's running, but it's set to manual, which means it won't start on its own. I'm going to change that to automatic under startup type and click OK. And now I'm going to go ahead and close services. So now if we install updates or we reboot, SMTP services will start automatically. Next, I'm going to click Start and type IIS. And we want to choose Internet Information Services 6. So sometimes you'll see Internet Information Services Manager. You want to make sure you choose the one that says 6.0 in it. OK, I'm going to go ahead and open that. Maximize that. Here I'm going to expand the server name and then right click on SMTP Virtual Server and choose Properties. And we're going to start on the Delivery tab. OK, here I'm going to click Advanced. And under Smart Host, I'm going to paste the name I copied earlier. So again, this is the MX record 
from Office 365 for your primary domain. I'm going to click OK and apply. Now I'm going to go to Outbound Connections and confirm the default settings. Most importantly that the outbound port is port 25. So I'm going to leave it that way. Go ahead and click Cancel. Here I'm going to click Outbound Security. And this is important. Check this bottom box for TLS encryption. This makes sure that your outbound messages that go over the internet are encrypted. Okay? Go ahead and click OK and apply. Under messages, I like to uncheck the top two boxes. Those are limitations on this server for accepting emails. I don't like there to be any limitations here. If you send a message that's too large for Office 365, it'll be rejected on that side. I don't like it to be rejected here. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply. <coughs> here I'm going to click access. And under relay at the bottom, I'm going to change it to all except the list below. So this means that all accepted messages on this server are going to be allowed to relay to Office 365. That's what we want. Go ahead and click OK and apply. If you do want to limit connectivity to this server, you do that under connection control. You're going to click connection. And here you're going to change it to only the list below. And then click add and add, either add the IP addresses for the devices or services you want to use this server for. Or add your subnet here. In this case, I'm going to leave it open, so I'm going to change it back to all except the list below and click OK and apply. And finally, I'm going to click General and check the box to enable logging down here and click OK. And that's it. My server is all set up and ready to go. Okay, so now what do I use on my copiers and scanners and maybe help desk software or web pages to send emails through this server? I'll show you. I'm going to minimize IIS here, and I'm going to, in this PowerShell, I'm going to type IP config to show my IP address. And the IP that matters is this server's IP, right? So I'm going to copy that and hit Enter. Now I'm going to bring up a document that shows the settings. I'm going to replace the IP here with the one I just copied. Okay, so I'm going to read this to you real quick. The important stuff is in... Uh, highlighted in the middle here, but here are the settings you're going to use for SMTP relay. The server IP address that you're going to put in, say, a copier, is the IP of this server. The port is going to be 25. On your scanners and copiers and whatever you're using SMTP relay for, you're going to say no encryption, okay, and no authentication. It's going to allow the connection on your LAN to the server you just set up. The important thing is the from address has to be at your domain. Okay, so you can't send from something like localhost um, or, uh, you know, say for Cisco Unity, your, your uh, address can't be voicemail at Unity. It has to be at your domain or Microsoft won't allow you to send it. If you adhere to these settings, though, if you send from your domain and use the rest of the settings as indicated here, the message should flow through your IIS server to Office 365 and then go out either to the internet or to the mailboxes in your organization. One extra piece of information here is if you're blocking port 25 to the internet, make sure that you open it up for the server. Okay, that's it. Hopefully that helped. If you have any questions, you can see our email address in the comments below.